Hello everyone, welcome to my incredible chess channel. Today I'm back with yet another classical game for you and I'm quite sure that you are going to enjoy this game. This game was played between Chigorin and Januski. Both of these players were very strong players at that time and uh, I'm really glad to bring this game in front of you. Well, my name is Atul Dahale, I'm a candidate master and let's begin with this game. In this game, white starts with e4. Janowski is playing from the black side, Chigorin is playing from the white side. So Janowski plays e5, knight c3. Well, when you play knight c3, the main idea is this is called as the Vienna game opening. The main idea is to control the d5 square. Why? I'll tell you one thing, a little bit background about this thing. The thing is that at that time, means uh, this game was played in 1895. So at that time, people used to play King's Gambit a lot before that also. So in King's Gambit, when you play f4, black always have a very strong counterplay with uh, d5 move. So after this, uh, you know, a lot of interesting theories there. When you capture here, e4 comes, it controls the knight, uh, knight square on f3. And then when you play knight c3, then knight f6 comes and so on. The theory is uh, a lot, a lot of theories there. So players began to think like, how can they counter against this uh, d5 breakthrough? So they came up with the idea of knight c3 and controlling the d5 square. Well, uh, d5 is not going to be stopped. At some point, d5 is going to come. But for the time being, it is going to be stopped. And another idea is also there that white players thought like, okay, they can play d3 and then they can play f4 so that it will be much more prepared uh, opening. Okay. Means like the kind of attack you want to do, it will be much more matured and much more prepared so here black played knight to f6 d3 was played of course with the idea of playing f4 in future so one more thing like if you play f4 in this position then of course you have a uh, lot of options in this position one of them is d5 and uh, even if you capture here on uh, e5 you can capture on e4 and uh, there is a lot of theories there like you can even play d3 then it will be captured on uh, c3 b capture c3 and at some point white will be trying to play d4 knight f3 and uh, the game goes on okay so but in the game d3 was played and after d3 f4 is one of the ideas so black says like okay i cannot really allow f4 without any interruption so i have to play in this position the very important counter attacking move in the center of the board that was d5 so d5 was played and then uh, e captures d5 knight captures d5 was played uh, if white doesn't capture on d5 and if he decides to play f4 anyhow so you have two options either you can just uh, ignore the pawn on f4 and just play d4 attacking the knight or you can continue with your development by playing knight to c3 knight to c6 that is also one of the options in the position well uh, ed5 was played in the game we'll continue with the game knight captures d5 and now in this position white should have gone for something like uh, maybe knight f3 bishop to e2 followed by castle but instead of playing like this white miss chigorin in this position played queen to e2 well queen e2 is not good because you are restricting your own bishop on f1 that is one of the thing well you are attacking the pawn on e5 you can say uh, but the pawn on e5 can be supported very easily with knight c6 and then the queen on e2 looks a little bit uh, awkwardly placed at least to me okay but chigorin had a uh, different ideas in the position he mainly played queen e2 because he was not actually thinking about casting on the queen side uh, king side he was actually thinking about castling on the queen side so that's why he removed his queen from that uh, side of the board his next idea is to bring the bishop on c1 out and then go for the long castle so Janowski must have understood that thing. He said like, okay, I'll play knight to c6 supporting the pawn. Then he plays bishop d2. Of course, the idea is to long castle in this position. Black continues with bishop e7. His idea is to just castle. So I would like to tell you something that when two sides castle on opposite side, counter attacking chances and are always going to be there. One side will always try to attack on the opponent side king. So in this position, black will always try to attack on the queen side where the white's king is there and white will try to attack on black's king which is situated on the king side in this position. So here uh, white decided to play queen f3 putting some pressure on knight on d5 because it is under attack by two pieces but still here knight of three was a possibility trying to control this square plus attacking the pawn on e5 and maybe maybe 
you can think about rook g1 and g4 or you can even try to play h4 h5 something like that on the side of the board but the thing is that white's attack is not that much fast in this position because his pieces are kind of cramped up in the position okay so here after queen to f3 the knight on d5 is under attack so he saves the knight with bishop to e6 now it is well defended no worries about it uh, white gets the knight to e2 square of course the idea is to control the d4 square and also if it's needed it can jump over to all the squares if it needed in future so black says like okay i need to do something in this position and you might think like okay let's start the attack on the queen side why not play a5 or something like that but Janowski did not go for those things. He understood that in this position, center control is very important. And in order to control the center, here in this case, he played f5. The idea is quite clear. He wants to control the e4 square. And in future, if white is going for g4 or something like that, it is also discouraging all those ideas in this position. Okay, fair enough. So uh, Janowski said like, okay, my queen on f3 is a little bit awkwardly played. Let's put it on uh, h3. And the idea of playing f4 is also kind of stopped for the time being because the bishop on e6 will be free. Okay, in prince. Because if you push the pawn, the bishop on e6 is hanging. So black says like, okay, no problem. I'll play queen d6, support my bishop on e6. And the, the idea of f4 is always there in the air. So you cannot really play knight g3 in this position because if you play this position in that case f4 will be coming your queen will be under attack and uh, it's kind of tricky still you can play knight to e4 and game will continue but i'll i'll say this thing that uh, you can also wait in this position and try to create your own counter play with b5 kind of move sacrificing the pawn going for rook to b8 and putting some pressure on the b file okay so anyway knight captures d5 was played in the game then uh, white uh, black captured on d5 the pawn on a2 is under attack so you have to support it so knight c3 was played the queen is under attack now the thing is that you need to continue the attack on the pawn on a2 so here in order to do that thing he played queen to a5 now in order to save the pawn on a2 there are two options actually three means like you can play king b1 you can play push the pawn to b3 or you can push the pawn to a3 we'll be considering all these options and we'll also see what was played in the game. So we'll consider step by step. So let's see if you just block out the attack with b3, then what is going to happen? First of all, you can already see this thing that black's uh, attack will be much more powerful than white here. That is quite obvious because white will be having a lot of weaknesses around his king, especially on the dark squares. The dark squares will be weakened and we have this bishop coming over here. Queen can also come here. Knight can jump to d4 or uh, b4 you can say. So I don't really feel like this position is that comfortable for uh, white. We can also start with bishop to b4 attacking the knight on c3, king b2 if you play. Then a very nice and slow idea is there that you can play rook to d8, knight d4, rook d6, rook a6, point to, towards the pawn on a2. It's a little bit slow plan, but why doesn't really have any counterplay in this position? That's why we can actually go for that thing. So here I will just uh, simply play rook d8 or I will first play knight d4 and go for the thing which I was talking about. So b3 is not that much uh, great, but it was playable. It was not like white was losing straight away or something like that. It was really playable move. And uh, another move, king b1 was also... A practical choice in this position because after bishop to b4 you are threatening to capture on c3 and then followed by capturing on a2 if you try to save the pawn on a2 then we can simply capture on a3 and uh, it will be the similar position which happened in the game knight will be jumping to b4 square bishop a2 is one of the threats we'll talk about it after some time so let's see what was played in the game in the game actually pawn on pawn was played to a3 square now it is a clear-cut target for black to capture okay so here uh, Janowski said like okay it is an invitation I'm not going to deny this invitation he captures the pawn on a3 and now if you capture it here we'll see what happens it's quite easy like you will be capturing on a3 with a check king will be coming to b1 square and now the knight comes into the fray with knight b4 the idea is quite simple like we want to give this check and uh, let's suppose you play some random move bishop e2 for example then uh, bishop to a2 check is there if knight captures then queen captures a2 followed by Queen a1 is a check and mate and if you don't do that thing then uh, if you play king a1 for example then knight c2 will lead to a checkmate because king will not be having any squares to move around. So 
bishop after bishop captures a3 if the pawn captures it will be a big trouble for white so white said like okay i will try to defend he played uh, knight to b1 and now you can see that white's king is surrounded by his own pieces so it's a very difficult situation for white and uh, black's pieces are already there in the game this bishop is there this bishop is there knight is there queen is there okay right now our queen is under attack but uh, we just want to see this thing that we can blow up on the position like we can just open up the position how will you open up the position the only shelter in this position which white is having is the pawn on b2 so here Janowski goes for chigorin's pawn on b2 he captures the pawn king is uh, drawn out in the center you can say now queen a2 check king to c1 and now the pawn on c2 is the only weakness which we should be attacking how will i att attack that pawn well we have two options one is bishop b3 but i don't think so it's a good option we have another option that is knight to b4 and now queen c2 checkmate is there and there is no way that uh, white can actually save that checkmate for longer duration of time white can give up the piece with knight a3 but we'll just go for the check the king will move here and then we can give this check and there are multiple checkmates we can play queen c2 checkmate we can play queen a1 checkmate and the game is almost over so that's why after knight to d4 actually chigorin decided to throw in the towel he resigned the game and uh, that's how this uh, beautiful short game i hope that you enjoyed and uh, stay tuned with me we will be meeting very soon in other videos also and uh, Till that moment like this video subscribe to my channel if you are new here and thank you very much our channel has uh, recently crossed 6000 subscribers so i'm really grateful for all your support i know i'm not that much active but i'll be more active because i'm going to play some tournaments and i will be getting back with recaps of my games so stay tuned for everything thank you bye bye take care